How good is this Irish team? Well, a lot of the Irish people that watch my particular channel are telling me all the time how dominant this Irish team, how world beaters they are. And uh, yes, there's no doubt about it, this Irish rugby team is a very, very good team. When you start talking about domination in world rugby, let's see how many years they can do this for in a row against the best teams in the world. I think the Irish tour to South Africa this year is going to be fantastic. And of course, the All Blacks are going to come up in the autumn series as well and take on Ireland. So after those games and at the end of the year, we can have a conversation a little bit more in depth about who's being real dominant in world rugby at the moment. But there's no doubt about it, this Irish team is extremely good. G'day and welcome to Inside Rugby with Mark. I'm a Kiwi rugby fan living here in beautiful Cancun in Mexico. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the third game that was played in the weekend in the 2024 Six Nations competition between Ireland and Italy. Yes, Ireland welcomed the Italian team to the beautiful Aviva Stadium in Dublin. And it was a game that many of you expected for Ireland to win quite comfortably according to the community poll that I put up on the channel before the game. So let's get on and talk about the game. In this video, I'm going to give you a full review and my thoughts around this particular game. Okay, so the game got underway in the first 90 seconds. It was all Italy. They had a bit of ball. They started running it towards the Irish 22 and they looked quite intent in the way that they were going to play this game. And I thought, wow, we could have a competitive game on our hands here. In the third minute, they got a penalty kick opportunity right out in front. And it was that man that I've been talking a lot about in my videos, Gabisi, the number 10 for Italy, came up and took the attempt at goal. And guess what? He missed it. He pushed it out to the right. And the TV cameras panned around to Gonzalo Quisada, the coach of Italy, in the coaching box. And his face expression said it all. And uh, it was an opportunity gone for Italy. And who would know that they may not get another opportunity in this game. But after that, Ireland started to get into the game. And it wasn't long before they started putting pressure on the Italians by breaking the play open. So in the fifth minute, it was no surprise that Hugo Keenan was one of the Irish stars that took off and made a fantastic break downfield and beat most of the Italian team. It was a fantastic break from Keenan. It was something that I'd been looking for from this guy in the previous games because he is a superstar at fullback and I love to see him when he runs the ball. And it was a beautiful weaving run that he got past a number of Italian players. This put Ireland down on their first real major attack of the game. And it was the first chance to see whether they were going to be able to convert this possession and territory into some meaningful points. The ensuing pressure led immediately to an Irish try. And it was that man, Jack Crowley, at number 10, who finally went through and scored the try from Ireland. But there was a lot of good play in there from various numbers of players on the Irish side to set up that try and uh, it was Crowley that had the conversion attempt after seven minutes he missed that unfortunately and uh, didn't bring his kicking boots to start off this game but Ireland went ahead five points to nil after seven minutes of the game and pretty much from the kickoff and the restart of the game the Ireland went back down into the Italian territory and started putting more and more pressure on the Italians and I really liked what the Irish were doing in the forwards. Conan was playing really well to start off the game and ably supported by the likes of Doris as well and Ryan in there. This was going to be a very big performance from the Irish forwards on this particular day and as I would say later on in the video they actually were really enjoying their work against Italy. But we got to see Ireland putting pressure back down on the Italian line. The Italians couldn't clear the ball Gabisi had another kick in general play which was an absolute shocker didn't put the ball out gave Ireland the opportunity to get down for a five meter line out and the pressure was really on once again unfortunately for Ireland they couldn't convert this particular raid into points Italy got the clearing penalty and were able to get away from their line on this occasion the ball came back to Ireland and we found Jack Crowley with the ball in general play he went to do a strategic kick it got charged down Italy came through and happened, had an opportunity to put more pressure on Ireland at that particular point. One of the areas I think Crowley needs to improve his game is around the speed of his kicking. He's been caught out a couple of times now that I've been watching with those general kicks in play. They've been charged down. He's a little bit slow in that area, something that he needs to work on. 
Italy went back down on to attack and it looked like they were actually having a promising move that could lead to something but uh, James Lowe went in there and disrupted the ball and won the ball for Ireland which was a great turnover for Ireland James Lowe started to really get into this game and looked like he was going to have a big impact on it great performance from Lowe in that situation getting in there getting the ball off Italy and nullifying the attacking opportunity in the 17th minute, Italy got a penalty from an opportunity where Ireland weren't moving away from the tackle ball fast enough and they put the uh, ball down 10 metres out from the Irish line. An opportunity here for Italy to really go on the attack and try and get some points. In Italy won the line out and started to put the ball back through the hands. Capuzio got the ball and decided to make a kick pass across the field. It was a disaster. It went out and the whole attacking opportunity for Italy ended up being nullified by that poor decision the ball should have gone through the hands and who knows Italy might have had a chance of getting through the Irish back line in the 19th and 20th minute we saw Doris go for a great run for Ireland broke through a couple of Italian players and it showed Ireland on the front foot again Italy was still in the game at this stage and I just thought that their kicking was letting them down and a lot of that had to do with Gabisi at number 10 he's not good at kink general play kicking and the guy needs to be replaced. I just said this every time I watch Italy play. He need, they need to have a kicker in there at number 10. And somebody who knows how to call the game. Game management is so important when you're playing against a great defensive line like Ireland. And Italy just didn't have it on this occasion. But after 20 minutes I thought Italy was still in the game. Ireland were looking very dangerous though. Every time they got the ball they looked like they were going to break this Italian line open. But for me it was just a matter of time before... The and we didn't have to wait much longer because in the 23rd minute the Irish were down on to attack again. The ball came out to Crowley and he did a wonderful round the back pass that found Dan Sheehan who went over for a try in the game in the 23rd minute. So a fantastic try from Ireland. Well done to Crowley. He used that uh, late round the back pass to get the ball to Sheehan and Ireland went over for a very good try. For 25 minutes we had Ireland in the lead by 12 points to nil. The conversion by Crowley was successful to his own try and it seems as though Italy were getting a little bit into trouble here. Ireland seemed to be starting to dominate the game more and more. From the kickoff that ensued after the try and the conversion, Ireland went on the attack again phase after phase putting a lot of pressure on Italy and I could see the Italian defensive line was starting to creak and it was only a matter of time before Ireland were really going to make a meal of this game as far as Italy were concerned. There was no resilience in the Italian defence like we saw against England. They were having a lot of trouble containing this Irish forward line in particular when the likes of Doris and Ryan and the big boys and even Dan Sheehan who got the ball on a couple of occasions were making great runs for Ireland and they were looking very very dangerous right across the pitch. By the time we got to the 32nd minute mark of the first half Ireland were just pushing the passes a little bit too much trying for the impossible offload and it just wasn't working they had to settle down a little bit and get some structure back into the game but as I said it was only a matter of time before that was going to happen. By this stage of the game Italy had made 87 tackles compared to Ireland 60 so they were getting a bit tired the, Irish, the Italian defence as well and this wasn't going to bode well for the Italians moving forward. But it was in the 37th minute when we saw Ireland and in particular their forwards going on raid after raid close to the Italian line again and it was just a matter of who was going to do the pick and go and score the try. On this occasion it was Jack Conan, fantastic try by him. He was having a big game and uh, very impressed to see this young guy at number eight. He's very, very good. The conversion was successful so by the time we got to the 38th minute of the game Ireland were out to 19 points to nil. Italy, I have to say, were getting worse and worse as this game went on. Their defence was poor. Any time that they did have the ball, they looked clueless as to what they were going to do with it. And as I say, a lot of this comes down to the fact that Garbisi at number 10 is not the right man for the job. He's not able to marshal this Italian team around the field. He's not making the right decisions with his boot. And he's also not distributing the ball in a way that sets up the likes of Men and Cello and those outside. They've got a weapon in Ioani on the wing, but they're not using him effectively and bringing him, him in to set up second and third phase ball. That's my opinion. And then just one minute out from half time, Byrne went off a fantastic run again, and Ireland looked like they were going to put more pressure on Italy to end the half and perhaps score more points. They didn't do that. So we went to half time at 19 points to nil to Ireland 
in the lead. I think Andy Farrell would have been pretty satisfied with that first half from Ireland. They look very dominating across the pitch. In fact, they look ruthless as far as I was concerned. And I really thought the floodgates were going to open up in the second half. Italy were poor across the field. They weren't doing well when it came to their strategic play and their game management needs to be really sorted out. Their skill sets were letting them down as well. And I think Gonzalo Quesada would have had a word to them in the dressing rooms at half time and just said, boys, you've got to execute your plays. There was too many drop balls. There was too many behind the back passes. And this wasn't allowing Italy to get on the front foot. The Irish defense on the other side were very, very uh, fast in their line speed and getting up in the faces with Italy had the ball and causing them all sorts of problems. I think Andy Farrell would have said to the boys at half time, just to keep the control of the game, don't try and push the passes too much. Let's keep our structures together. There's always a danger when you're winning in this fashion that you go out too fast, too strong, and try to do too much in the area of cuteness. And that's something that they had to be careful of. But I was sure that if Ireland came out in the second half and they were able to put their passes together, keep playing the way that they were doing, they were gonna dominate this Italian team. I didn't see a way that Italy were gonna get back into this game. And uh, with the way the Irish were defending, there was going to be very hard for Italy to score many points at all, I thought, in the second half. Now, Italy started off the second half as they started off the first half. Their first 90 seconds of the second half was very good. They had ball in hand. They were attacking. They were moving downfield. The ball came out to their lock forward, Ruza. He had a great run that broke through the Irish line. And then it all came to a splattering end. And unfortunately, Ruza got very uh, tackled very very hard after that run and uh, he ended up going off the field it looked like he might have done some ribs by the look of the tackle actually that was uh, put on him so that was unfortunate for Ruza but it was a good attacking start for the Italians in the second half and this is what they needed to do to try and break through this Irish defense now in the 45th minute of the game James Lowe got the ball deep in Irish territory and he put one of those massive kicks in that he's renowned for put the ball down in Italian territory. Italy decided to run the ball back and they did it with purpose. It was a very, very good attacking part from Italy. However, they got stopped again by this great Irish defense and the Italians ended up going nowhere closer to the Irish half. The other thing we saw from the Italians at that stage was again, their passing was not going to hand. They had a couple of balls that went down onto the ground, gave the Irish defense time to come up and snuff that sort of stuff out. In the 49th minute, Ireland got a penalty. They went back on attack again. They had a five metre line out from the Italian line and it looked like the pick and go was on once again for the Irish forwards. That's exactly what happened in the 50th minute. It was that man, Dan Sheehan, again, that went over for his second try of the game. And it was a great move by the Irish forwards. They were very, very dominant and Italy just couldn't stop them from scoring that try. Unfortunately, we had the missed uh, conversion from Crowley of the try by Sheehan. So after 50 minutes of the game, we had Ireland in the lead by 24 points to nil. They were looking odds on to run away with this game. And they were really starting to put the pressure on Italy, who had no responses to them. In the 52nd minute was that man, uh, Hugo Keenan, again, that did another fantastic break. He was playing really, really well in this game. And as I said earlier in the video, I just like it when... Keenan gets out and starts doing a bit of running. He can break open most defences. Two minutes later, Ireland thought they'd got over for a try to Henshaw. It was disallowed for something that happened prior to the try. And unfortunately, at that stage, Ireland weren't able to put any more points on the board. 56 minute, we had an Italian break, and it was that man that I've been bagging through the video, Gabisi, actually had a very good run. So when he keeps ball in hand and actually runs it, he did okay on this particular occasion but the Irish defense shut down the Italian attacking opportunity again. And this is what's happening with this Italian team. They're not able to build several phases, play after play, and getting their outside backs involved. We have one player, Ruzzo, who made a good break in the beginning of the half, then Garbisi makes another good break, but the Italians are not backing it up with several different phases of play in an attacking mode, and they just don't seem to have the penetration to be able to do that. On the flip side though, the Irish defence was working very, very well and any opportunity that they got to break out Italy, it was quickly put out by Ireland and their defence was very, very strong across the field. So the Italians' uh, position on the field in terms of chasing the game ended up with a disciplinary action in the 57th minute. We saw Men and Cello have a bit of a brain fade 
he tripped over one of the Irish players and ended up getting a yellow card and being sent to the sin bin. So the last thing the Italians wanted to do was to go down to 14 men against this Irish attacking line. In the 58th minute, we saw a great attack move by Ioani. He's one of the players that stands out for me for Italy in every game. He just brings that energy and purpose every time he gets the ball. He's looking to make a difference. He's trying to get through the opposition's defensive line and he makes sure that he gets the ball back cleanly as well. It's a shame that he doesn't get more of the ball. It was a good run by Ioani, but once again for Italy, it didn't lead to anything in terms of second and third phase play. But it was in the 62nd minute where we saw James Lowe take off down the sideline to score a fantastic try for Ireland and it put Ireland well and truly out in front in this game. The conversion was missed by Crowley, so after 62 minutes, we saw Ireland in the lead by 29 points to nil. Now, something caught my eye that I thought was quite interesting in the 65th minute when Van der Fleer came on for Ireland as a replacement, and uh, he was coming over to the scrum that was about to take place, and there was a smile on a number of the Irish forwards towards him as he was coming on the, the field. They were enjoying themselves, this Irish pack, in this game, and they were having a very, very good game indeed. So in the 72nd minute of the game, we had a change for Ireland at halfback. We had Casey going off, and Gibson Park, the favoured number one Irish halfback, coming on. Casey played very well in this game. I watched him very closely. He was distributing the ball very quickly, giving Crowley the opportunity to get Ireland going forward, and he was very, very good around the breakdown area. So great game from Casey, I thought played very well. Gibson Park had eight minutes to play a little cameo appearance in this particular game and he went about it straight away. At that stage of the game Italy got one last chance that would be their final attacking, attacking opportunity. They looked uh, unaware of what they were doing with the ball, they weren't disciplined with it and the attacking opportunity came to nil as far as they were concerned. In the 76 Sixth minute of the game, Ireland were back on attack. They had a line out 15 metres out from the Italian line and it looked odds on that they were going to finish this game with a bit of a flurry and that's exactly what happened. The ball came out from the line out. Nash got his hands on the ball, went through and scored a great try for Ireland in the 76th minute of the game. Crowley got the conversion over so Ireland went out to 36 points to nil. Italy weren't able to score any points in those final moments and we ran the clock down over 80 minutes and as we were about 82 minutes into this game Gibson Park went over for what he thought was a try and a lot of the Irish fans in the crowd but he was actually short of the line and didn't make it so the referee ended up not awarding any try to Ireland and the final score of this game was Ireland 36, Italy 0. So what's my take on this game and how good is this Irish team? Well, a lot of the Irish people that watch my particular channel are telling me all the time how dominant this Irish team, how world beaters they are. And uh, yes, there's no doubt about it, this Irish rugby team is a very, very good team. When you start talking about domination in world rugby, let's see how many years they can do this for in a row against the best teams in the world. I think the Irish tour to South Africa this year is going to be fantastic and of course the All Blacks are going to come up in the Autumn Series as well and take on Ireland. So after those games and at the end of the year we can have a conversation a little bit more in depth about who's being real dominant in world rugby at the moment. But there's no doubt about it, this Irish team is extremely good. They were ruthless in this performance against Italy. They took it up another level, I thought, than they did in their first game against France. And it was controlled through the forwards. Doris had a big game. Conan had a great game. And the front row was very good at Porter and Sheehan as well in there. And their lineouts were working very well with Byrne and Ryan. So across the field, this was a total performance from Ireland. Casey, as I said, was really good at halfback. Crowley, couple of things, missed a couple of conversions today couple of things in general play that he needs to work on but I think he had a solid game and as I said in my previous video Crowley's building into this position at number 10 and just needs to be given more and more opportunities to build up his confidence and he'll go to the next level. Did Ireland miss Bundyaki in this game? I don't think so. I think McCloskey had a really good game. Henshaw was good as well in the centres and Nash and Lowe were very good. Lowe won the player of the match as far as the TV channels were concerned and I'd probably give it to Conan. I think Conan had a better game than Lowe, but who am I to say about these things? On the other side, I think Gonzalo Quesada will be very disappointed in this Italian performance. They showed a lot more against England than they did in this game against Ireland, 
and I think there's a couple of things that we need to bear in mind around that. The first one is the Irish defence was way better than what we saw in the first game from England and this didn't this put so much pressure on the Italian backs that they weren't able to work out any ways to penetrate this particular Irish defence and the problem that they have is Garbisi at number 10. He's not the right guy for that position. I've been saying it all the time now since this competition started and through the World Cup last year. Let's see if Crisada is going to make any changes in there. I'd like to see Tommaso Allen in at number 10 and be given the opportunity to try his skill sets. I think that might work for Italy. Italy were outplayed in the forwards, both in the set pieces, but also in open play. We saw a lot of Irish open play running today from the big forwards, and that was absolutely tremendous as well. So I think Quisada was actually going to be disappointed after this game. Italy have taken a step backwards. They're going to have to regroup now and come towards the end of this competition, hoping that they can lift their game. I was a little bit more optimistic about this Italian team after that first game. That has slipped back a little bit as a result of this game against Ireland. But a large, of it, a large part of that has to do with the way that this Irish team goes about playing their rugby. There's more to come from this Irish team. I think they can go up a couple of more levels from where they are at the moment. It was a very, very good performance, but I'm looking forward to what they're able to do against Wales and England in particular as this competition continues. So there we go. There's my conclusion on the, this third game of the 2024 Six Nations competition for round two between Ireland and Italy. 36 points to nil. For Ireland, Italy were not able to score any points in this game disappointing from their perspective I'd like to hear from you in the comments what you thought of this game how did you think of the what did you think of the Italians performance compared to how they played against England and what did you think of this Irish performance compared to their game against France a week ago we're gonna have a couple of weeks off now before we get back into the next round of the Six Nations competition but don't don't worry about that I'm gonna be throwing out lots more video content between now and then talking about the competition so far some of the players that have stood out from me and the tactics that some of these teams have been using and what they need to build on as far as my as far as i'm concerned so there we go don't miss any of that the best way to stick around is hit the subscribe button of course if you have liked this content give the video a thumbs up and uh, don't forget to drop your comments about all aspects of this game and if you want to mention the referee you can do that as well Okay, I'll be back again really soon with some more video content. Until then, stay safe, stay well, everybody. It's time to say adios from beautiful Mexico. Until next time, bye for now.